An entitled Karen demands that she's given a discount at a convenience store after she doesn't bring enough money to pay for her stuff. But after the clerk shuts her down and denies this request, this entitled Karen calls up her husband and lies to him by saying that she's being held hostage against her will. And I'm honestly still blown away by this entitled Karen. Here's what happened. Okay, so I just witnessed quite possibly the most entitled interaction of my life. I'm a 40-year-old female and I was at my local convenience store talking to the owner's daughter as she needed help with homework and was asking everyone if they could help her understand it. And since I'm there almost every single day, they know me very well. Well, in walks the entitled Karen of this story, probably around my age, and she begins gathering items and dumping them on the counter, completely disregarding other customers who were already at it. This goes on for a few minutes and then she goes to pay. At this point, the clerk is serving someone else and this entitled Karen just interrupts the transaction completely. She says to him, my items are on the counter so you shouldn't be serving anyone else as I'm clearly waiting to be served. Now, I always believe that in order to be served in a store, you had to be physically present in line or at the counter, but maybe I'm wrong. The man being served smiles at this woman and states that he's buying smokes and needs about 30 seconds to complete his transaction and that she can wait in the meantime. Well, this led to much huffing and puffing from the woman, and then she turns to me and says, can you believe the audacity of some people? And at this point, I couldn't help but giggle before I replied. I said, no, but I do really appreciate the irony. And trust me, she did not get the joke. By now, the guy has left, and the clerk is ringing up her items and putting them into bags. He finishes up and tells her the total, which was about 30-something dollars. Now, apparently, this entitled Karen only had $25 with her, so she told this guy he will take $25, because that is literally all she has. But he tells her that he will willingly take the $25, provided that she removes sufficient items to ensure that it covers her bill. And when he said this, this lady went on a tantrum that I've honestly never Ever seen before in my life. She started shouting, I need everything. You can't deprive me of my needs. Who do you think you are? I am calling my husband. And when she said that, the clerk didn't miss a beat. He replied by saying, well, make sure he brings his wallet. Now, the kid and I have completely forgotten about the homework, and we're now enjoying the theater production unfolding in front of us. Well, out comes her phone, and she's scrolling furiously, all while repeating, oh, just you wait until he gets here. And again, the clerk doesn't miss a beat. He says to her, I have no other choice but to wait. My shift doesn't end for another three hours. She then literally stomps her feet, all while shouting, but it's only $10. And I'm almost at the point of having to put my fist in my mouth to stifle my laugh. This woman then calls her husband and puts the phone on speaker. And once he answers, she puts on this really pitiful whiny voice. She says to him, baby, I'm at this store and the clerk is holding me and two other females hostage. You need to come and rescue us. But this guy must be all too familiar with his wife's antics because he answers in probably the most apathetic way you could possibly imagine. He says to her, you can't really be held hostage and be allowed to use your phone. So either you didn't have enough money or you're trying to buy alcohol without an ID. Well, at this point, I didn't stifle the laughter. And now this entitled Karen had three people openly laughing at her. And then she sheepishly admitted that it was the former. Her husband then says to her, if you leave the chips, candy and soda behind that you don't need and that we have more than enough of in the house, I'm sure you'll have enough money. This entitled Karen then started to protest, but her husband said, I've told you about doing this kind of stuff. Say one more word and I'm canceling your birthday. She then stomped her foot again as she hung up the phone and told the clerk to remove the suggested items so that she could cover the bill. And I'm honestly still amazed by this entitled Karen's audacity. Wow, talk about not only entitled, but super rude. She seriously was like, oh, I don't have enough money. You're just gonna have to take what I give you. It's like, no, that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna risk my job for your stupidity. So honestly, good for that clerk for standing his ground because the the way this Karen was acting was completely out of line. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. This next story came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for asking my roommate and her party guests to leave the living room as they had kept me up until 2 o'clock in the morning and I needed to get up early. Here's what happened. I'm a 22 year old female and my 20 year old roommate is having her birthday and she told me that she would have some friends over, they would go out and then a couple of friends would stay the night and I was going to be out the duration of the party so I couldn't celebrate with her. Well, I got home at around midnight and they weren't home. I went to bed and it is important to note that my room is considered the den of the house so it's off the kitchen and living room area and it has a window to the living room. My roommate and her seven friends got home shortly after and they started cleaning the kitchen. Well, I came out of my room 
room and I asked if they minded leaving it for tomorrow and they apologized and said they didn't realize I was home yet. Well, they didn't stop cleaning the kitchen, which then took them about 45 minutes. And after that, they started playing video games in the living room. I could tell they were trying to be quiet, but even whispering, I can hear every word and the lights were shining directly into my room. After about an hour of video games, I came out again and I asked if they were going to bed soon, explaining that I needed to be up at 8 o'clock in the morning, especially since it was now 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, they said yes and turned off one of the lights but kept playing video games for another 40 minutes. I came out again at this point and I reiterated that I really needed to get some sleep and if they were going to hang out, could they at least do so in my roommate's room? And at this point, they either left or started getting ready for bed. It's a shared apartment and her birthday, so I don't know if my annoyance was valid. I mean, we don't have an agreed upon curfew. Also, the reason they were in the living room and not my roommate's room is because that is where the TV is. But it may be important to know that I am the one who owns the TV. We haven't lived together very long, but she has her friends over a lot, and this isn't the first time she has disrupted my sleep, and it probably won't be the last. So am I the jerk for asking them to stay out of the living room? What should I do? No, you're not the jerk for telling them to keep quiet, because you have to get up early the next morning, and they kept you up all the way until what, 2 o'clock in the morning? Like, I'm sorry, that is inappropriate, and that is not okay. Your roommate should have taken all of her friends into her room, closed the door, and then keep it down, relatively speaking. But for them to be making all that noise all at your expense, that in my opinion is completely inappropriate and I don't blame you for getting upset in the slightest. Am I the jerk for refusing to meet my biological mother in person after I matched up with her on a DNA testing site? Here's what happened. I'm a 24-year-old male and I was adopted when I was 6 years old. I've always felt incredibly lucky because my adoptive parents, who were in their late 20s when they took me in, have been nothing short of amazing. They've loved and supported me as if I were their own flesh and blood and I've never felt like anything was missing in my life because of being adopted. Growing up, I had very minimal details about my adoption. I know that I was removed from my biological family by social services due to neglect, but honestly, nothing specific. I don't remember anything about my life before I was adopted. Well, recently, out of simple curiosity, I decided to sign up for one of those home DNA testing kits. I wasn't looking for a reunion or any deep connection, but I just wanted to know more about my genetic history, like why I was removed from my biological family, and if there were any medical issues I should be aware of. Honestly, I didn't expect to find anyone closely related to me, so it felt like a low-stakes way to get some answers. About eight weeks ago, after sending off the kit, I remembered to check the results, and to my surprise, I matched with my biological mother. She had sent me a message saying that she was overjoyed that I had done the test, and that she desperately wanted to reconnect with me and the rest of my biological family. She mentioned that she's thought of me every single day, that I was always loved, and even that I have a biological little brother who is very excited to meet me, which is something I didn't even know. Her message was really emotional and to be honest, it was completely overwhelming. To me, she is a complete stranger and reading those words didn't stir anything in me other than discomfort. I spent a lot of time crafting a thoughtful response to my biological mother explaining that while I appreciate her message, I wasn't interested in forming a relationship with her or any of my other biological family members. I made it clear that my reason for doing the DNA test was purely for information. I wanted to understand my past, maybe get some medical history and learn why I was removed, but that was it. I then apologized if my actions gave her the wrong impression. My biological mother read my message and replied, saying that she'd be willing to give me all the information that I wanted, but only if I agreed to meet her at a cafe to discuss our relationship further. Well, I straight up refused, telling her that I wasn't comfortable with an in-real-life meeting. I offered a phone call as a compromise, but emphasized that I just wanted the information and then for the both of us to move on with our lives. Well, she outright refused to provide any information unless I agreed to meet with her in person and discuss our relationship. I talked to my best friend about this, and she actually sided with my biological mother, saying that I was being unfair. She argued that by signing up for the DNA site, I had essentially opened the door to this kind of situation, and that refusing to meet with my biological mother now is like playing mind games and leading them on. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you are not the jerk, and let me just start off by saying that your best friend is an idiot you did not sign up to have any kind of like doors open in your life. You did the whole DNA test in the first place so that you could get information about your medical history and not reconnect with your deadbeat mother. Like seriously, she neglected you and then congratulations, you went off to somebody else. And thank God that you did because it sounds like your actual family is really good for you. So no, you didn't sign up to have this door open in your life. And also, why is this DNA kit allowing people to message you that you're matching up with? Is there no way of doing this?
doing this privately without being like, oh yeah, you're related to such and such in like Missouri or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's just me and maybe I'm just a really private individual. But if I was in the original poster shoes, I would really want some kind of privacy to move forward with this. Also, it is incredibly toxic that your biological mother is refusing to give you any information until you two discuss your relationship. But it's like, wait a second, what relationship is this lady even talking about? She clearly wasn't a good mom and that's that. And the fact that she wouldn't even find some kind of compromise and having a phone call to have this discussion, but like demanded that you be there in person makes me think that she's trying to set you up to like guilt trip you into her family. And that is absolutely not okay. So no, I don't think you're the jerk. And I think you are absolutely in the right for denying this request. Am I the jerk for telling my family that me and my wife will no longer be going to their monthly family dinners? Because after the awful treatment they showed towards my wife, I've decided that my wife is going to be my priority and these people will never talk to her like that ever again. Here's what happened. Ever since my dad was a kid, our family has done monthly family dinners. And these are nicer ones than your average family dinner. It's something our family did when my siblings and I were kids as well. We'd have grandparents over and we'd all have a nice dinner together. When my siblings and I grew up, we still did it, only instead of what happened before, where branches broke off over time and did their own thing, they decided we should include partners and spouses and our kids as a whole. By the time I was 19, the family had decided they would take turns hosting each month to lessen the burden. My wife was excited to be part of them at first. We started during our relationship and I did the cooking to start and then she took over after a while because she wanted to. My family had seemingly got along with my wife before this point, but they were overly harsh of her cooking, with the exception of my two younger siblings. She tried to make them happy, but no dice. I told them that they could be kinder, but they said that she should cook better or just cook something different. But my wife didn't make anything they don't eat. But even still, nothing was right. So eventually, she grew frustrated and grew very suspicious. So we hosted a couple of months ago, and I told my wife we were going to pretend I did the cooking, just to try and see what is going on. She told me that she felt like they just weren't fond of her food, but I pointed out nobody had the same amount of complaints as them, and they even criticized the steak and potatoes that they all seemed to go crazy for. She went along with a plan, and when my family thought that I cooked it, guess what? They absolutely loved it. They said it was so good my wife had decided to let a real talent take over, that it was so nice to have something a little bit different, and all this other lovely stuff. But my younger brother and sister were not fooled, and instead of saying anything, they enjoyed watching the rest of the family dig a hole. When the rest of my family heard it was my wife's food and not mine, they tried so hard to backtrack on all the nice stuff. The rest of the dinner went into a tense silence and my wife's eyes were opened. I told her I was done with these dinners and she was my priority. She felt a little bad, so I told her that sometimes we could still have dinners with my younger brother and sister. And honestly, it's less stress anyways. When we didn't show up to last month's dinner or for this one, my parents and siblings started asking questions. I told them each we weren't going again, but missing two made it sink in. They told me we need to be there, and I said never again. My wife doesn't deserve their disrespect, and I told them they ruined what they wanted by being absolute jerks to her. They said I was overreacting, making very relationship-harming choices, and treating them badly for simply having an issue with my wife's food. They also said to think of future kids and how they'll miss out. Some of it also got to my wife a little bit, which I have tried to reassure her about. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you are definitely not the jerk, but your family and anybody else who's criticizing your wife, they are absolutely the jerk. Because this clearly is not about her cooking skills at all. They clearly just don't like your wife for some kind of reason, and they're only going after her to try and make her feel bad. I mean, you proved your point right then and there by being like, oh yeah, I made the food tonight, but your wife is actually the person who put it all together. And then they try to backtrack and be like, well, we don't actually like it. It's like, what are you talking about? What is wrong with you people? There's clearly some kind of like secret feelings here, and it is so inappropriate that this is the way they choose to act. So no, I don't blame you for not going back to those stupid dinners, because they were clearly just a chance for them to take shots at your wife. And if I was in your shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. My fiancé purposefully used a laundry detergent that I am definitely allergic to and causes me to have many bodily issues. So, as a result, I decided to change my will so that he would get nothing that I own if I were to expire because of his negligence. Here's what happened. My fiancé and I recently bought a house together and we got basic things from his family as housewarming gifts. His grandmother gifted us a huge package of laundry detergent but here is where the problem starts. I am and used to be highly allergic against most laundry detergents. I'm not talking about some uncomfortable itchiness or whatever but stuff like vomiting, diarrhea, losing my eyesight temporarily and possibly losing consciousness. 
this, and I have been hospitalized for this multiple times already. We are currently using two brands that I'm not allergic to, and he keeps complaining that they don't smell that good, which might be true. They aren't really fragrant, and I know he used to drown his clothing in fabric softener just to make them smell nice. I offered to slowly start taking new laundry detergents because he keeps complaining and those two aren't easily accessible in his home country, but definitely not in the foreseeable future, as I am eight months pregnant and very afraid of the possible consequences. Well, he agreed and I thought the topic was done, but then his brother gifted us baby clothing and my fiance kept commenting on how good they smelled and how badly he wants our clothing to smell like this. I then sorted through them and after I was around halfway done, I noticed that I felt kind of off. My hands felt weird, my body felt wrong, so I washed every body part that touched those clothes and I refused to touch them without gloves. So he definitely knows that I'm still allergic against most detergents. Well, he still decided to use the gifted laundry detergent on our towels and I didn't notice until I started folding them and putting them away. My hands started to get hot and kind of numb and really itchy and at first, I was afraid that I am now allergic against one of the safe ones until I noticed the gifted one was opened and kind of shoved into the corner and our other two are just opened and readily available and I just don't get it. I texted him and I asked him if he used the gifted laundry detergent for anything and he responded back by saying, yes, what's the big deal? I told him that it's not funny and he's potentially playing with the life of our unborn son and mine and why he thought that now of all times is the right time to test my allergies again. He then called me a drama queen and ignored me after that. So in response, I changed my will. My fiance gets nothing now, neither my part of the house nor my other assets. Everything goes to my son with my family as trustees until he is of age. If something were to happen to both my son and me, my cousins will be the sole inheritors. My fiance was originally meant to be the trustee with different guidelines to make my son's life and his pretty comfortable. So I trashed the old will. I sent the new version to my lawyer to make him look over it and plan to get it to a notary as soon as possible. So am I overreacting for changing my will? What should I do? Okay, I don't think you're totally overreacting here, but I do think the bigger problem here is your fiance. How is he not taking your allergy seriously? Like this just doesn't make any sense to me and there's no good reason for him to be like, wow, what's the big deal? You're being a drama queen. It's like, buddy, do you want her to expire right then and there and possibly risk your baby in the process? Either this guy really just doesn't care about you or he is so stupid that he doesn't realize the ramifications of his actions because this clearly sounds very serious and what you're describing literally sounds like an allergic reaction waiting to happen. So no, I don't blame you for changing your will if something does happen to you, but I think the bigger problem is with your fiance, because if he is not going to take this seriously, especially with your life possibly being at risk, then in my opinion, something absolutely has to change. Am I the jerk for telling my parents that they owe my husband a real and heartfelt apology after they offended him in a way that I will never accept? Here's what happened. I'm a 27-year-old female, and I met my husband, who we will call James, in high school. He was a boy with a bad reputation for dumb stuff, and by dumb stuff, I mean not stuff that he did, but stuff that he didn't do. Stuff like going home or having an adult around him. His mom was an addict who didn't let him come home before midnight on any given night, so he would spend his time in different places, which made adults think poorly of him. By the time people realized it was because he had a crappy mother, they judged him for her actions. My parents were some of those judgmental people, and they would see him out past dark and then make comments. And you know what? They were awful when James and I started dating. I told them they consider themselves Christian and should be more understanding and welcoming of someone who didn't have a good home life. But they would say he wasn't trying, like he could do anything about his mom. They judged him for not going to college. They deemed him lazy for not going, even though he held a job until he was 14 and with the help of a couple that he'd worked for, decided to go to trade school instead. My parents were so awful about it that we didn't even talk for an entire year. Then they reached out via my siblings to apologize to me and they appeared to accept James and realized that they had been wrong about him. Now James always got along with my siblings but he started to get along with my parents too and it was nice. We then got married two years ago and we welcomed our first baby together in June. But last month we had a big fight. They showed that they kept their opinions to themselves for this long but they never saw James as a good person. They always saw him as trash and it all started because James was alone with the baby for an entire day and they were horrified that I trusted him to watch our child without me there. They spewed such hateful things about James that just weren't true. He is an amazing dad and husband. He's not his mother and he has never been in trouble with the law. So the fact that they spoke about him like he was some kind of criminal, I mean, that really pissed me off. I then kicked them out and I told them I was done with them. Now, we 
are still good with my siblings, which is where this post is taking us. We started talking Christmas and James and I said that we would host them. Well, my mom was trying to get my siblings to ask me if I'd come to Christmas dinner at their house with a baby. And it was then that one sibling said that James and I were hosting. Upon learning that, my mom took this sibling's phone and called me and asked me how I could leave them uninvited. But I told her that if they wanted to be invited to anything ever again, they need to truly reflect on their actions and words and make a real and heartfelt apology to James. And that is the only way. It has to be real to him and not to me. And then I hung up on my mom. My parents are now claiming that I'm trying to blackmail them, which I don't think they truly know what that means. And they sent a text, which I assume is from my mom, accusing me of being disrespectful of my parents and saying that I can't demand an apology. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Nope, you are definitely not the jerk. The way your parents are acting is so out of line. They seriously want to try and look at James and be like, oh yeah, you're an awful person. And then freak out when he's watching his own kids. As if the original poster has to be there to make sure he doesn't mess it up. Like these people even know James's living situation as a kid and they knew that his mom was a complete deadbeat and they still want to equate that to him in some kind of way. Like what are we talking about? He hasn't done anything. He's literally the victim of having an awful upbringing and it's all stuff that he could not control. So the fact that all these years later they're still trying to hold it over his head, that is crazy to me and there is no good reason for that. So no, you are not the jerk and this is absolutely necessary, especially if I was in your shoes. Because if someone's going to disrespect my significant other like that, then they had better apologize if they ever hope to see me or my spouse ever again. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.